Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so excited and blessed to bring God's word to you today. Now before going to today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Join me right now in faith and say, Father, I demand and I receive my daily bread. Right now it's coming to me in Jesus name. Amen. Praise God. Now, why have I been talking to you about offerings and, and tithing and first fruit? Because that is the light that God has given to his children. If you don't walk by that light, then you will be walking in the darkness that has covered the earth. God didn't clear out the darkness. He gave light to his children. And if his children will focus on the light, they will grow up and begin to build systems from the place of light. And that's how to take care of the darkness that have covered the earth. That's how to dethrone Satan. Dethroning Satan is not by gathering and praying and declaring and say, Satan fall, Satan fall, Satan fall. When he falls, what next? We still get up from that place of prayer and begin to walk by his systems that he has put in place. That is darkness in itself again. So if we don't keep our minds on these things that the Lord has taught, if we don't position our hearts to begin to do things according to the light that he has given, brothers and sisters, darkness, I'm sorry to say, is your portion. No matter how you refuse it, you will still wake up. You know, like I shared with you some, some, some last week or so, the, the system of walking to get paid, you see that now, is the Egyptian system. And because of ignorance, and people don't know, David said this, he says, it is vain for you to rise up early to sleep up, to sleep late, to eat the bread of sorrow. What's he referring to? Why do you wake up in the morning? Why do you go out every day? You carelessly use those words. I'm going in search of my daily bread. Ah, uh, you see? Now, you see that statement, no matter how honest you seem to sound, that statement is actually professing your faithlessness in God. I came to your house yesterday morning. I didn't see you sitting here. What will I be doing in my house by 8 a.m.? I've gone out now in search of my daily bread. In search of your daily bread. Yeah, a man has to walk. But I thought God said, he gives you your daily bread. He gives you. Why are you searching for something that he gives you on a daily basis? Oh, no, 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 no. You don't understand. You don't understand. See, uh, you know, sometimes you see, put, put Bible aside. Where do you think money will come from? What kind of a question is that? How can you ask where do you think money is going? How can you ask where do you think God is? You know, that's the question Moses asked God and that got God angry. God said, the children of Israel, they want meat. He said, yeah, I'll feed them with meat. And Moses said, where are you going to get meat to feed all those people? God said, Moses, what are you talking about? Don't you know me? That's an insult to ask that kind of question. So David said, it is vain for you to rise up early and sleep late because of this purpose, to eat the bread of sorrow. He is not saying it is wrong for you to walk. He is saying if your purpose of walking is to earn a living, then you are walking in darkness. Our purpose for walking is not to earn a living. Nah, you see, that's why the salary structure is what controls your life. That's why you rather go for what is paying higher than searching the mind of God to know where you should walk. You know what you're doing? You are serving mammon. That's why after a while you start agitating and fighting for a pay rise. Even though if you've labored well, you are due for good um, rumination. But you see, if that is your purpose, if you are thinking, I need a raise in my job so that I can afford the kind of life that I, can, I want to afford. You are living in darkness. If you think I need to switch jobs, why do you need to change jobs? 
Yeah, because this job is not paying the bills. You are walking in darkness. David said, it is vain for you to rise up early and sleep late so that you will eat the bread of sorrow. David said, it is vain. What does vain mean? Useless. It is useless for you to rise up early and sleep late just because you want to eat the bread of sorrow. Why is he saying it is vain? Why is he saying it is useless? He said it. He said, because your father gives you blessings even when you do nothing. What does that tell me? Hey, even if I choose to walk today, it will not affect my daily bread. Ah, can you just let that sink in your mind? Even if I refuse to do anything, it will not affect my daily bread. So, so are you saying we should all get lazy? Come on, come on. You see, now, you know, you know why many of us are not available to work for God? And when I mean to work for God, I'm not saying everybody needs to be on the pulpit preaching. I'm not saying go open a church. I'm not saying, no, be available to work for God. I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you. You wake up in the morning and because of the job you do, there are certain things even the Holy Spirit can never tell you to do. For example, you, you wake up in the morning, you're going to work and there's an emergency somewhere taking place. The Lord cannot tell you, son, I need you to pray for the next one hour, non-stop, to take care of the situation. He can't tell you that because you'll be at work. The boss will require you, you need to get some document, you need to, there are some activity, there's a meeting. You can't get into the meeting and say, come on, come on. Sorry, bro, what I did? No, no, no. The Lord told me to pray. The Lord told me to pray. There's something going on. The Lord told me to pray. No, sir. The Lord will have to look for someone else. You see? Why? Because even if he would take care of that situation at work, it takes a level of maturity for you being in that kind of situation to still pay attention to what God will have you do. But you see, that's why, first of all, that's why I'm teaching you what I'm teaching you. First of all, you have to deal with your mind. You have to deal with your mind. I am not working for the pay. I'm working because I am putting... If, if your mentality is right, so everyone knows that the money they pay you in this organization is not what's getting you, is not what's keeping you alive. Everybody knows that's not what's paying your bills. You know what I mean by they know? They, they've, they've looked at you and they've looked at the car you drive and they look at the salary you and I'm not talking about being corrupt. Because now, 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 your testimony is clear to everyone. You are earning that cheap salary like every other person. And everybody's complaining, man, oh, this, this, this salary is paid. Can't even do anything. Say, relax. And me, well, I'm here because God commanded me to be here. But see, my needs... God fully takes care of my needs. So what are you talking about? Say, relax, you will soon see. And you land the office with a brand new car. Say, hey, how did you get it? God gave it to me. Eh, tell us now. Show us the way. Show us. They say, no, God gave it to me. Someone walked up to me and blessed me and said, God told him to come, come give me that money because I was asking God for a car. Or someone walked up to me yesterday and said, God said, you should give me this car. You think that is impossible? No, you think that is impossible? That's how God works. So they look at you and say, just like that. Yeah, just like that. I mean, how can somebody just walk up to you? Say, because I'm a child of God. I have, I have lots of brethren. So wait, I don't get So is it that your church brothers and sisters contribute their money and bought you a car? No. One person, God spoke to him. And, and, and he did. In fact, he's not even a member of my church. Someone I knew from somewhere else. But he's a believer. Uh -huh. you, you know, that's how we make the gospel attractive in its reality it's not that you're using that that's your testimony your testimony so you're not trying to coin a testimony to make it attractive that's your testimony if it's not your testimony you can't lie so just like that you get a car so now you're driving a car and the office is looking everybody's wondering is this stealing our money no it's not still it doesn't even control money is it doing anything illegal no it's not doing anything illegal. they would search and search and then they'll come to that conclusion that you're clean but then they cannot understand. And they look at you, even the clothes you wear, they are just looking at you. And you are doing your job so diligently. So you are so honest at work. They respect you for that. I'm telling you the truth. If you 
If you call your boss, now, now everybody knows your testimony. That's why you cannot hide your testimony. If you wake up in the morning and the Lord, now because, now you will be receiving all that because you know you are the Lord's service, even in that organization. So you get to that place or that day where the Lord will tell you, son, you need to pray. There's a situation, you need to pray. Don't step out of the house until this time. Stay and pray. Thank you, sir. Lord, grant me favor before my boss. And then you take up your phone and say, sir, sorry, I have an emergency. I'll be coming late to work today. Please, when I come, I would explain. You know, I don't regularly do this. But this is an emergency. I'm telling you the truth. That because you've already aimed respect and honor before their eyes. Now you can focus and do. Of course, you know, God is not going to be doing that every day. <laughs> See that now? He, he understands your working. So he understands your services are needed. And you need to be diligent in that place. He knows. So he's not going to be telling you every Monday. See that now? But he can structure you out. He can tell his son, take a leave next month. From this day to this day, there is a work I want you to do for me. Yes, sir. So you do things lawfully. But I'm telling you that if you are so available to the Lord, he can tell you that. And you know that you will have favor before your superiors. You know why? Because you have shown them honor. You have shown them how to live as a child of God. And number two, you have shown them that you're not dependent on their salary. Because now, even if their minds want to go wild, say, what, what does it say? We'll fire him. Somebody will just say, hey, hey, hey. Are you sure if you fire that guy, you're not doing him good? You think he will budge? I'm telling you the truth. People cheat you anyhow because they feel, and you have shown them, that your life is dependent on them. Now, I'm, I will never encourage you to practice um, unfaithfulness or truancy. Or, or such things. A child of God must be diligent. A child of God must show honor in all that he does. A child of God must show excellence in everything that he is doing. He must show excellence in everything that he is doing. And when you do that, how are you going to do that? When you know where your source is. There is something about knowing who you are that gives you boldness in life. I'm telling you the truth. It makes you bold. You, you stand tall. You, you know, even when you're talking to your bosses, they, they, they look at you and they, they are wondering, are you, are you the son of a, pre, of a king? Are you a prince in a kingdom or something? You know, they, they, they look at you and say, this person looks like he has, you know, he, he, he knows where he's coming from. It's like he's just doing this job because he wants to work, not that he really needs this money. <laughs> So when everybody's agitating for pay rise, all we are saying, increase our pay, you won't join them. Rather, you sit down and look at the whole situation and say, well, I think, I think, well, they deserve it. Because not everybody's like you. They, they don't believe like you. So you know what you do? Say, hey, no, no need. No fighting. No shutting down work. Allow me. Let me talk to the bosses for you. <laughs> you, know, you become the chief negotiator. And then you get in there and say, look, sir, I think their demands are quite uh, not out of place. Yeah, but we don't have that kind of money to pay. But you know what? I can sacrifice my own. But see these people, let them get theirs. Look at you. What, what kind of a person are you? Now that's the life he has called us to live. Now you are trying to negotiate now. So, so you get them in a difficult position where you tell them that, see, I'm ready to sacrifice my own, but please give these people their raise. You don't have to give me, but give them. Now, they don't know what to say. They don't know what to say. Because now you have elevated yourself to be a boss like them. Just by that state. Now what am I telling you? This is how we live in the light. This is how we live in the light. Now you can only talk and act like this because of what you see. If you see the light. If, now how, how do I see the light? In him is life. In him is is life now so when i look at the word i see life you see now I, I see in the word of god that he daily loads me with benefits so okay i want to live by that benefit if he daily loads me with benefit then every day i should expect something from him and then i, I begin to put that pressure on the word i begin to put that pressure on the word. Lord, i didn't receive anything yesterday what what, what happened I needed to do this. I needed to. I didn't receive anything. So what happened? Lord, today I've got to receive. Now that's how you put pressure 
That's how you put pressure. Until heaven, until all the angels know that you know that you've got benefits to receive. And you begin to walk in that light every day of your life. Because you see it. Oh, he gives blessings to his beloved in sleep. Oh, wow, wow, wow. So even though I do nothing, I receive from the Lord. Yes. Oh, I, I've not had a job for the past two weeks or for the past three months. And life has been tough. It's not tough because you don't have a job. It's tough because you have not been receiving your benefits. What are you talking about? What are you talking about? Yeah, that's true. Life is tough not because you don't have a job. Life is tough because you are not receiving your benefits from your father. Go to everything Jesus taught us. There is none that your labor is demanded. He said, take no thought for your life, saying what you will eat. But now, before you get to that place where you live like that, then you have to begin to do the principles that I taught you from last week to this week to yesterday. Your offerings, your tithes, your fresh fruits, you, you, all those things are in place. Now, because those things are in place, you are boldly walking in the light because that's what you see. I have given, I have honored the Lord with my substance and I tied from everything that I receive. You know why I tithe? Because I, 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 I trust the Lord and I honor him. He's the one who blesses me. So in and out of job, he blesses me. He blesses me. That's my life. That's my relationship with him. So I don't consider my pay to determine the kind of life that I live. I don't. Oh, may the Lord open your eyes to these things. These things are so real. But you see, if you don't pay attention to them, though they are there, you will live as though they are not. No, praise God. And my time is up. Ah, le barakashad the break in here. It is so easy to walk in the blessing. It is so easy to walk in the anointing of God's spirit where, where the blessing is concerned. It's so easy to walk in the light if you will only submit your heart to it. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.